Welcome back, everybody, to Dr. Sellers Educate. We're happy that you're back with us. And if this is your first time, we are happy that you're here too. Remember that you want to make sure you purchase your resources as first step. There are recommended references that are highlighted by NON. Those are the ones that we highly recommend, starting with Billings and Halstead Teaching and Nursing, as well, and that's the sixth edition, as well as Dr. Caputi's review book, if you're taking the CNE or the CNE Novice. And if you're taking the CNE CL, we recommend Schellenbarger's resources listed in the description here as well for this episode. Before we jump into our study workbook part five, I can't believe we're already at part five, you want to make sure that you are subscribing to this channel so every single time there's a new episode, you'll be notified right away. There are educators that have exclusively focused on our workbook and the recommended study plan that we have listed out in our resources on our website, which is drsellerseducate.com, and have been successful. So you can do it too and know that we are here to support you until you are successful in crossing the finish line. All right, so for this for this session, we are focusing on part five. Let's go ahead and take a look at the resources that are available to you in our workbook. As you flip over to your CNE study workbook, you are going to see um, on page four, the self-evaluation and scholarship components that are listed under part five here that you can see on my screen. We will focus on specifically three different areas of self-evaluation and scholarship to include professional development, being a change agent and leader, as well as Boyer Scholarship Model. We know that Boyer Scholarship Model in itself is a whole episode, okay? So we're not gonna spend a whole lot of time focusing on that for this episode. I think what we will do, unless we hear different feedback from you all, is on our next episode, you will see a breakdown of circumstances associated and situations with Boyer Scholarship Model so that you can be most ready when you sit for your exam. There continues to be questions related to all eight competencies for the CNE, CNE novice that we highlight, but specifically focusing on, you guessed it, curriculum, facilitation of learning, exam analysis, as well as Boyer's scholarship model. Because some of the components of Boyer's model can seem a little bit um, more, shall we say, general, that's why we wanna spend some time in our next episode focusing on specific examples of um, situations and the associated Boyer Scholarship Model level associated with that um, specific example. All right, so we're not gonna get into that for this episode, but we'll see you for the next one. All right, so when we look at um, professional development, there are three components we want you all to hone in on as you close your knowledge gaps. First of all, it's gonna be scholarship. Understanding what the university requirements are for you when it comes to the area of scholarship. Now, if you're known as a teaching university, there may not be requirements per se for scholarship, but you want to understand the contractual language that you are obligated to under the area of scholarship. The second component we want to focus on is looking at your professional development. NLN talks about the importance of us maintaining our professional relationships with our clinical area of specialty, as well as our nurse educator um, area of specialty. We know that certification is the mark of professionalism and the key step in the process of us really validating nursing education as a specialty is by ensuring that we are staying current in the knowledge and awareness that we have about those evidence-based practices associated with teaching strategies, evaluation strategies, so we can incorporate the most innovative teaching strategies to enrich the learning experience with our students. Just as a sidebar, I highly encourage you all to use the whiteboard feature, and I will go ahead and do a demonstration here for you. The whiteboard feature is going to allow you to engage with your audience in a very unique and different way. You can actually share, just like I'm doing right now, with others um, that are part of your Zoom session. You can come in here and you can add a shape. This is the um, shape that we use to talk about our um, the Bloom's taxonomy and our sessions, our boot camps that we had over the weekend. And we simply, once we were able to um, draw our triangle, we simply type the three learning domains, you can actually engage with your audience and they can type 
um, on the whiteboard as well, which is awesome. But we talked about the three learning domains. Just as a refresher here, they are psychomotor, cognitive, if I can spell. And what's the third one? If you guess effective, you are correct. All right, so that was a really neat way for us to engage in a different kind of way. And you can also um, draw on your um, whiteboard. And if you're like me and it's tough for you to draw and have a, um, a, a clean triangle or clean circle, um, you can always just go to your um, automated, you can see shapes here, which is cool. But if you wanna go back to drawing and you feel comfortable in your penmanship, then you can definitely use that feature. Another quick um, feature is the sticky note. I like that um, as well. So it's just making it a little bit more fun. You can change the color of the sticky note. Um, again, this is all about using innovative and creative ways to further engage our adult learners. That's what this is all about. And then you can um, close your whiteboard at the top. So just a great interactive way to engage in the learning experience with our students. All right, so that was number two. And then number three is just making sure that we are being responsible for our um, learning, right? So number two is professional development. That's where we are engaging with our professional organizations, being actively involved with NLN, receiving updates about new research or evidence related to how we can be a better educator, and then also staying closely connected to our clinical associations and organizations. All right, so that was number two. And then number three, is being responsible for our own um, learning and development, right? So engaging in those professional development opportunities where we are completing contact hours and like you all are doing right now, where you are engaging as a lifelong learner, being committed to advancing your knowledge and expertise as an educator. Now, of course, we're gonna have some opportunities through professional organizations like NLN, but again, it's about us assessing kind of where we are as an educator, identifying where we wanna be, and then utilizing tools to help us close our knowledge gaps. Very similar to what you're doing right now with the CNE and CNE novice and CNE clinical review, right? As you're moving forward on your journey, you're doing that self-assessment to think about and look at where you are uh, regarding the competencies for us as educators and then where you need to be. Some of the key components that we've talked about already are gonna be the resources, and the second component is gonna be that study plan. So what you wanna carve out is gonna be generally speaking for six to eight week time frame, anywhere between eight and 12 hours a week. Looking at the two competencies to start out with for CNE is gonna be facilitation of learning. That's where you're gonna spend a larger percentage of your time because there's more than a third of the exam that's gonna be covered under just those two competencies. All right, so I know we've talked about a lot, specifically looking at those three components that you wanna consider under the umbrella um, that we've looked at for this session. If we go back to our study workbook, um, we have been talking about um, self-evaluation and scholarship, specifically our professional development, um, a change agent and leader, as well as board scholarship model. We're gonna table that for next week's episode because we like to keep these fairly short. All right, so as we close out for this episode, we want to remind you that the study workbook is available on our website. We also want to remind you that you have a lot of complimentary resources that are on our website, drsellerseducate.com. If you scroll down, you will see each of the comp or each of the certifications and all of the resources that are available to you. We hope this has been helpful. And until next time, this has been Dr. Sellers Educate, and we hope you have a great week. Bye-bye, everybody.